I know tons of talented Excel users who failed to pass their Excel MOS exam, not just once, not just twice, not just three times, but multiple times, and I don't want that to happen to you. So that's why I put together this video that'll help you go over some of the Excel skills that you're absolutely gonna see on your exam. We're gonna go over 10 skills that are gonna help you avoid failing your Excel MOS exam. We are starting off with the toughest task that you might face on your Excel MOS exam, and that is how to import a CSV file or a text file from a different file and then import it onto our current worksheet or workbook. So here we go. So we need to grab a list of the instructors for Shayla's Elite Excel School, but Shayla's already done this for us, so we just need to import her information from a different file into the current workbook. And we're gonna do that in the Proctor's Worksheet. So we're gonna click on that one. We're going to click on cell A4 because that's where we want to put the information. And then the first thing you need to do to import files from a CSV file or a text file is click the data tab. You can click here from text CSV, but you might also have to click the down arrow for get data. And then you'll click from file, locate the from text CSV option. That should pull up the documents folder on your exam. And you're either looking for a CSV file, which will look like this Excel logo file, or a text file, which will have this like paper scroll with writing on it type thing. So we'll double click on either one. If it was CSV, it's gonna look like this. If it's a text file, it's gonna look like this. Likely it's only one file like that in the document folder for your exam, but you'll just have to double click on it. Now, don't just click load, it's not that easy. Whether you have a CSV file or a text file, you have to click transform data. In this example, we have to get rid of the column one, and two, and three, which typically happens when you're dealing with a text file. The text file gets confused when you transfer it over to Excel, but we can fix that. Click transform data. So if your CSV converted properly, just ignore this step if you have that task on your exam. But if you have, if yours looks like mine right now where it says column one, two, three, and you're asked to sort of remove that on the task, all you'd have to do is use first row as headers, and that would remove that so that your actual, like the first row is the actual intended first name, last name, and email. Okay, but we're not done there. You make sure that you say close and load to, not just close and load, because we're not done. Excel does this thing that can throw you off. So the task is likely gonna ask you to put it on the existing worksheet and not create a new worksheet from that. Okay, so existing worksheet, especially if the task asks you to actually pick out a cell like A4, it, you're gonna wanna put on the existing worksheet. Otherwise, it'll just put on the new worksheet in cell A1. So do existing worksheet A4. When you press OK, this little table should come up. There we go. And that's how you would import information from a CSV file or a text file. In this example, we're going to freeze a certain part of our worksheet so that when we scroll down the page, it still remains visible. So the way you would do that, let's say we, in this example, we want to keep the first two rows visible while we scroll down the page. The trick here is you're not actually selecting the first two rows. When you want to freeze something, whether it's the first two rows, you have to select the row beneath the area that you want to freeze. So we want to freeze the first two rows. We select row three to do that. If you want to select or freeze the first three rows, you'd select row four. But we want to freeze rows one and two. So in this example, we would select row three and it'll freeze everything above row three. Now that we've got row three selected, we can go to the view tab and in the window group here, we can go to freeze panes and just click freeze panes. If you've got row three selected, you just have to click this once. And you can even test it out, which scroll down the page. Rows one and two, does it come with us as we scroll down the page? And it does, so we've done this correctly, and you can just hop on over to the next task. On your exam, you'll have to take text within a certain cell and create a hyperlink from it. So let's say for this subtitle, we'll create a hyperlink to Sherry Publishing website, and uh, we'll click in this cell that contains that text, and then we'll click uh, Insert. You can also right-click with your mouse too, that works, but I like clicking the, uh, the link icon instead and that should pull up this link dialog box. So we actually want to link it to a website, so make sure you've got the website address down correctly. So let's say that is the address. You might also have to add a screen tip, which is just like a little tip. If someone hovers their mouse over that part of your worksheet, maybe you want to tell them what this actually is. So our screen tip could be company name or something like that. So press OK. And then if you were to hover your mouse over that part of the worksheet, it would let people know this is the company website here. So that's where it would take them. And then they would just have to click, they'd go to that website. In this example, in cell G12, we wanna calculate how many workouts were missed under the attended heading. So we've put an X for workouts that were attended 
and then left the cell blank. If they weren't attended, maybe life got in the way and we had to skip a day. So we want to see how many of these days were this person had to skip by using the count function, count blank function. It's a variant of the many count functions you can use, but this one allows us to count how many blank cells there are, which is great for this example. So we'll type equal count blank. And this is something that's sort of emphasized more so in the Excel 2019 exam. So you'll want to know this if you're doing the Excel 2019, that's the Excel MOS, but also Office 365 exam. Okay, so it's the equal count blank. And then we just want to uh, capture this range. So we'll just highlight it from the starting entry to the bottom. And then add a closing parenthesis in the formula bar. And then press enter. And this should tell us how many blank cells there are without kind of having to eyeball it. So there is three blank cells in that range. And that means we've missed three workouts and the count blank formula will let you uh, calculate that very easily. In this example, we're going to cover one of the trickiest functions on your Excel exam, which will be the if function. You might see this once, twice, or maybe even three times. So it's key that you master this function and how to use it on your exam. Now, if you need a little bit more practice than just one example, I've got a whole video. I've got 10 examples in that video about how to use the if function. I'll put a link to that video in the description of this video so you can check that out. But don't forget to come back to watch the rest of this video. But let's get started. Let's say in the selling status area of the worksheet, or at least in this first cell, H6, I want to display the words best seller or below average if it's not a best seller. If these books, if this is not you know, above maybe a certain range, maybe $1,000, maybe the selling status is below average, or if it's above that range, then it's a best seller. So if I want to display the words either best seller or below average or, you know, below expectations, anything like that, I would put that in here, but there's two outcomes that are displayed. And that's how we know we're dealing with the if function because there's two outcomes and we want to display one or the other, sort of like pass fail on an exam. But in this example, we're going to start equal if, and I want to see if the average for this quarter was above a thousand. So that's our logical test just for this first cell. So this one is, we'll grab onto this cell. This is a G6. And I want to see, because it's a table, it has like a different look to the cell reference, but I want to see if this is greater than a thousand. And that's our logical test. So if it's above that thousand, then we want to label it as best seller. So this is our logical test. Is that cell greater than a thousand? We know it's not, but let's plug it into the if function. So we'll put a comma after this to complete our logical test. That's one out of the three things you need in this function. The logical test, we've got it. And then the value that you want to display. So if that test is true, then it's considered a best seller. And then we'll put quotations around it because text values, you have to put uh, quotations around it or it won't display. So we want this to display bestseller if it's greater than a thousand. And then we'll put the other value, the false value, if it doesn't meet that requirement. So we'll put a comma. Now we'll jump into our false statement. And our false statement is uh, below average. This could be anything that you want it to be, but we'll just use these. So if you see like a dual outcome on your exam where they want you to display either this or that, like pass, fail, uh, above budget, below budget, that kind of thing, then you're dealing with the if function and it's going to look a lot like this. Again, uh, if this was too fast for you, check out the video in the description box of this video. And uh, I've got 10 different examples that'll help you with the if function. But we'll just add a closing parenthesis here, press enter. And then because this is a table, the function automatically copied down for the rest of the values in this area of our worksheet. And there we go. That's how you would do the if function. You are going to run into spark lines on your exam, and there's a little bit of a trick to inserting spark lines. We're going to insert spark lines under this trend heading here, but the trick is you want to get the first one first, like the first row first, and then just copy it down. Don't try to get all of them at once. It's not going to go well, and it's going to take a lot of time for you to do that. The quickest way is to just simply click this first cell. So this is uh, F17, and then I'm going to go to the insert tab. I'll click on that. And then you see the spark line group, you're likely to run into either a line or be asked to insert a line or column spark line. Let's say we're asked to insert a column spark line that'll show the trend uh, for the students marks on each exam, including the final exam. So we'll do column and then the data range. Now this is where it gets tricky because you think, okay, well, I'll just highlight all of these marks. You just want that first one. Again, we're getting the first one and then we can copy this down 
to the other rows. So we just want the four marks for this first student here. So I'll just highlight that in this data range and then just make sure that the location range is the cell where you want this data to go or the spark line to go. So that's the correct cell that we want, F17. And then we'll press OK. You got the first one and then you just have to copy it down using the autofill handle. So that's the trick right there. Just get the first one, copy this down and then release. And then you should see the trend or the column spark line for all the students in this class. You might run into something like this on your exam, not necessarily a wonky looking pie chart, but something where you have to switch the data in a chart from the what is originally plotted on the X and Y axis and switch them. Another word for switch is swap. So you might see the word swap the data over the y, X and Y axis or something like that. And the way you would do that is to click somewhere inside of the chart area so that you activate the chart design and format tabs. And then in the chart design tab, you're gonna find the switch row and column. And if you look closely at the direction or the little hint there, it says swap the data over the axis. So that's how you know that we're doing this step correctly. So you just click that once. And there we go. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. So now we're actually measuring the numbers and not the labels. And we've got what needs to be on the x-axis on the x-axis and what needs to be on the y-axis on the y-axis. So in this example, we're going to navigate to a certain range. And then on your exam, you're either, once you get to that range, you'll have to like insert information or delete the information that's already there. So the quickest way to get to a name range is to look up the drop arrow in this name box here and look for uh, actual name ranges that already exist. You don't have to create one. It's already going to be there for you. So let's say we want to go to the cool formula name range and then delete the content or clear the content. Same thing. So if you delete the contents of a cell or clear the contents, once we're at the name range and we have it selected, just press like I delete or backspace or whatever, exit out of that name range. And there we go. In this example, we're going to add a header to the center. So the center header, there's three, the left, the center and the right. And we want to add the header Dino Toys to the header of this document, make it look a little professional if you go to print it out. So the quickest way to add a header or footer, something you're gonna run into on your exam, would be to go to this page layout view. So right down here, you'll notice at the bottom of your Excel window, there's normal page layout view and page break preview. Go to page layout, and that's gonna quickly bring you to this page right here. Just make sure if you have a header, that you go to the top and that you're putting it in the left, center, or right box, if you're instructed to. And then if you had to add a footer, you just scroll all the way down to the page and add a left center or right footer. But let's stick with this example. So we're gonna add a uh, center header. So if it seems confusing, what does a center header mean versus left and right? It's just this box right here. So you just go ahead and start typing. Uh, Dino Toys, press enter. And then it's important to just kind of like click somewhere outside of the header once you're done. And then just kind of leave that uh, new header there and then just move back to the normal view. Now another skill that you'll run into on your Excel exam would be to select a part of the worksheet and then have that print off. And the way you would do that, let's say on this example, we wanna just, we wanna set this for printing like this area here, but we don't need anything else on the worksheet like this best selling toys area, we don't need that. Um, we might wanna keep it on the worksheet, but we don't need that to print off. So you can do that with a different view called the page break preview right here. So this is in that view kind of spot right here. So now we're normal. The last skill we did the page layout and this one is the page break preview. So click on that one. And then you can see that not everything's located on one page. And there's a few ways you can fix that. But one way to select the area that we want to print is to just select highlight it. And then from this range here, and then in the page layout tab, so we'll click there, and then set print area. Okay, so set print area, and then click officially click set print area here. And now we can see everything is grayed out that's not going to be there. You might even have to, now there's two ways to make this all one page. You can just simply click on this spot right here and drag it into the gray area with your mouse and drop it. Or you can, uh, if you want to ensure that everything is printed on one page, if that's what you're instructed to do, the safest bet is to go here in this kind of scale group and then change the width to one page and height to one page. We just did that, but just in case you want to be extra sure that everything's gonna be printed on one page, that's one way to do that. And then don't forget to hop on over to the normal view. I know it doesn't look like you did anything, but you did. If you can always hop back to the uh, page break preview and see, and then go back to normal view and then just jump to the next task.
But if that wasn't enough practice for you, I've got a whole Excel MOS prep course on Udemy. I'll put the link in the description below this video. We've got practice exams, practice questions, and tons of fun Excel activities for you over there that'll help you prepare for your Excel MOS exam so that you don't fail it and you can pass it on the first try.